God's wonderful surprise. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer, the king God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but who ever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise, on the third day, God sent an earthquake and an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. The angel rolled the huge stone away, sat on top of it, and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses, little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else. A shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said. But they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. The angel asked them, What are you doing here? This is a tomb, and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt, and then the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had woken from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is, Mary said urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary. Only one person said her name like that. She could hear her heart thumping. She turned around. She could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing Jesus. Mary fell to the ground. Sudden tears filled her eyes, and great sobs shook her whole body. And all she wanted in that moment was to cling to Jesus and never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary. Jesus said gently, and always be close to me. But now go and tell the others that I'm alive. Mary ran and ran all the way to the city. She had never run so fast or so far in all her life. She felt she could have run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun seemed to be dancing and gleaming and bounding across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember in the clear, fresh air. And it seemed to her that morning, as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made anew, almost as if the whole world was singing for joy. Boy, the trees, tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus' friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. She was right, of course.
Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, hope everyone's doing really well this morning. Wave at me if you've already had some chocolate today. Yes, good, good choices, good life choices. Um, I definitely had chocolate for breakfast when I was growing up. That was the only day we were allowed chocolate at breakfast. Um, but now I um, live alone, so I do what I want. <laughs> um, so occasionally it does happen, but Easter is the, the most important day. So Easter for me is just my favorite time of year. Um, a lot of you know that. Um, I love the story of Easter. I love just that day of just focusing on remembering that Jesus is alive and with us. I love the story of the pain of the disciples turning to joy as they discover that he's risen, he's defeated death. Um, and every year I, I really find myself sharing in that joy. Um, when I come to church, when we celebrate together, um, I'm just so excited that that story is just as true for me today as it, is, um, as it was back then for Mary. Jesus is just as with me. And we have that same amazing promise of eternal friendship with him. Um, and this year is uh, Easter is looking different in a lot of ways. Um, I'm, some of those ways are sad. So um, I'm sad that I can't be with you personally um, in, in the same room today. Um, it's sad that I can't go visit my family. It's definitely sad that I won't be having my mum's famous Easter cheesecake, although I'm making her make it for me as soon as this is over. Um, but as we've journeyed towards Easter this year, even though I was worried about how I was going to find it, um, Jesus has been really faithful. Um, and I've found myself experiencing that same joy, but in new and different ways. Jesus's resurrection is just as real and true this year as it ever has been. Um, and of course, that, um, that part of Easter, the, the truth of Jesus is never goes away. And neither does chocolate. That part of Easter this year will be just the same as it always is for me. We've, we've stocked up during our essentials trip um, and there is plenty of chocolate in the house. Um, and this morning, my flatmate, Ellie, hid three um, chocolate eggs for me in the living room. You can see my living room. It's tidy for once because we've had lots of time on our hands. Um, and hopefully some of you have got some, some eggs hidden around the room as well. So I want us to go and find our first egg. So hopefully they're not too difficult because I'm gonna give you one minute. One minute to run uh, if you've got some hidden and try and find that first egg. And I'm gonna run off and try and find mine and then we'll come back and we will talk about it. Okay, ready? Go search. Okay, how's it going? Okay, I can see um, everyone now. So if you found an egg, wave it at me, show it to me. Amazing, Hannah, Adam have got one. Aaron, amazing, Patience, Rosie, yes. Yes, Lexi, amazing. Okay, well, I've got mine. Oh, Steve's got one, I've got mine. So I've got here a packet of mini eggs. Um, I've got the M&M mini eggs because we love M&Ms in this household. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna eat them. Uh, speaking of which, we're not gonna stop you, but if you wanna save your eggs for the prayers, the prayers are gonna use eggs as well. So it might be worth holding off on at least some of them, you know, until the prayers, but you know. A bit of an explosion of mini eggs, okay. So this is a mini egg, you've probably seen them before. They are hard um, and they're in a, like a hard case. They're amazing. Um, so just um, think about this mini egg that I have here. Um, and for me today, this mini egg um, is gonna represent the stone of the tomb. I can see some people tucking into their eggs. Um, so this represents the stone of the tomb. So we heard in our story that the women went and they found that the stone was rolled away and Jesus was, was gone. And 
that idea of the, the stone being rolled away just demonstrates to me um, how much things changed for them that day. Because, you know, the Easter story doesn't start off joyful. Um, on Friday, we remembered how Jesus died, how his disciples had to see, um, that had to lose him. And they thought that that was it. And that cold, hard stone covered his body. And they thought it was over. They thought that their Messiah, their teacher, their friend was dead. But three days later, that same stone that covered him, that same stone was rolled away. The disappointment that they felt turned to joy. Jesus had not left them. On the contrary, he was doing the most amazing thing for them. He was saving them. He was giving them that gift of eternal life. And maybe sometimes we feel some of that same disappointment. Maybe even at the moment we are feeling um, some disappointment at the way that things are going for us this year. But um, we, even if we feel as though Jesus has abandoned us, has left us, like those disciples felt, we know that it isn't true. We see in the story that that stone rolled away and Jesus was just as present as before. So even if we feel as though we can't see Jesus, we can pray that we will soon see that stone roll away, that we will experience Jesus and we will see that he is always there. Okay, we're gonna go find our second egg. Are you ready? I have, um, I even, I've been looking around and I have no idea where this one is, so hopefully it won't take too long. Okay, I'm going. Okay, see everyone. Oh, wow, Michaela has an amazing egg. Amazing. <laughs> I've got one here. Adam's got one, who else has got one? Wanna wave? Yes, yes, patience. Oh yes, Teddy's got one. Oh, amazing, amazing, Anne has some. Okay, so this time I've got a nice big hollow Easter egg. So this one I actually have Steve to thank for. Steve and the family gave me this Easter egg. Now I am going to break into it. I'm not going to eat the whole thing right now, tempting as it might be. Look at this. If it's one of the ones that breaks open easily. Oh, it smells amazing. Okay, yeah, look at that. Yes. Okay, very excited to eat that later. <laughs> So this is a big hollow egg. You can break it open or smash it open and you can enjoy it and see the big empty middle. And this reminds us of the empty tomb. Um, Jesus has risen and he has left that tomb behind, that emptiness like we see in our hollow eggs. When the woman went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body, they knew exactly how their day was going to go. They knew it was going to be a sad, a difficult day. But instead, they ended up experiencing the greatest joy of their lives. They experienced the risen Christ. And maybe we feel as though we know exactly how things are going to go for us in the coming weeks, months, even years. Maybe we've come to expect things to carry on as normal with no great surprises, no extra special joys. Maybe we even try and avoid surprises. Um, maybe that's scary to us. And maybe we try and avoid um, anything too big with Jesus because it's scary what he might have in store for us. But actually, whatever stage we're in our, in our lives, if we're young or old, whatever, we should always go into Easter time expecting a big empty tomb level surprise. Something, an unexpected, awesome joy. We should expect to meet Jesus when we do not expect to meet Jesus. We, you know, when they go into the garden thinking that he's dead and there he is. We should expect Jesus to just come into our lives. It might be nothing like we imagine at all, but Jesus is outside of the tomb. The tomb is empty. And so he is ready and waiting to take us into life. And it says in the Bible that he wants to give us life to the full. Okay, we're going to find our... Final egg. Um, okay, ready? Go.
Okay. Wave your third egg at me. Wow, Michaela is doing well. Lots, I've seen lots of amazing big Easter eggs on Michaela's screen. Amazing. Um, Adam, yes, you've got one. Oh, wow. Edwin, I think Edwin has the biggest Easter egg I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, wow. Yes, Lexi. Awesome. Wow. Okay, everyone. Um, that's awesome. And I've got mine here. So this is, you've probably hopefully seen one before. This is a Kinder Surprise egg. Okay. I'm just going to see if I can get into it. I'm going to end up with a lot of chocolate sat in front of me after this. <laughs> okay, so if you've not seen a Kinder Surprise before, it looks like a normal chocolate egg. And if I break into it, inside it has a little gift. So there's going to be a toy in here. I wonder what it's going to be. Ooh, it's the flash. You see, it's a flash and I can put him together and play with him. That is really exciting. I love the flash. He's a bit too difficult for me to build right now though. Here you go, see? There you go, it's my little toy. I'm gonna treasure it. Um, in our flat, we have about 20 Kinder Surprise egg toys lined up um, on, our, um, on our cupboard back there because we love Kinder Surprises. Anyway, so that was exciting. <laughs> so um, for me, I wanna think about this Kinder Surprise egg um, representing new life. Um, so when Easter time is over for another year, when we've had our services, um, when church is going kind of back to normal, although what is normal at the moment, um, when we've eaten all our chocolate, which might only take today, <laughs> or it might take longer if, if you're very self-controlled. Um, but even after all of that, um, and after I've eaten my Kinder Egg, I'm still going to have the flash to bring me great joy, and it is going to bring me joy. Um, and also after Easter is done in a much bigger way than my little flash, um, we are still going to have that gift that Jesus has given us, that gift of Jesus's life, of his friendship, of the life we can live with him forever. That new life that comes from Easter, that new um, renewal of our relationship with God, that gift of eternal free life um, to the full, that continues. That is no more true today. Today we celebrate and remember it in a special way, but it's just as true tomorrow, in July, at Christmas. Um, yeah, always, even on the hardest days. For the disciples, um, that new life meant that moving from joy to sadness that we've talked about, from sadness to joy even, that we've talked about. <laughs> um, and for all of us, it means we've moved from death to life when we accept the risen Jesus. And maybe you or someone you know is experiencing that for the first time at the moment. Maybe you can think of someone who's um, just coming to learn that Jesus is alive for them. Jesus who is just as real and present as he was on that Easter Sunday 2000 years ago. But perhaps you know there's something that you need in your life right now, something new and joyful. Maybe you need um, a deeper connection with Jesus. Maybe you need more joy in your life. Maybe you need a better understanding of the gospel. And if Jesus has deepened your knowledge of him, even the tiniest bit over this Easter, then you can see that new life grow and flourish over the whole new year to come. Jesus is alive in all of us and he wants to know us. He wants us to know him better not just during Easter, but tomorrow and this year and for the whole of eternity. And so today, as you tuck into your treats, I have a lot of treats just like sitting around waiting for me now and my Easter egg, my mini eggs that went literally everywhere. Um, and as you tuck into those today, um, you can just take a minute to think about the joy that those chocolate eggs give you um, and the joy that Jesus can give to you when you just think about the fact that he is so alive and so with us. You can ask him to turn any sadness into joy, today and forever. Um, I know that Jesus, from my experience, always has amazing surprises in store when you, want, when you search for him, when you look for his love. Um, and so we'll all be praying um, this Easter time and this year that he shows his love to you in new ways um, and that, that joy of Easter, this Easter, carries forward into the rest of your life.
Brilliant. Thanks ever so much, uh, Laura. Well done for finding your eggs. It was brilliant to see them on the screen. And as you eat them today, you can remember the different parts of the, the wonderful Easter story. And uh, so now, Emily.